But I just want to be young and I want to live. I don't want to... Ah, uh, fucking Christ, God damn it, motherfucker. I have some, old, some older songs of mine are like just so linear as far as like never thought to like, oh, you repeat the chorus, you know, or like <laughs> maybe put a bridge in there or something like that. It's just like, here's a part, here's a part, here's a different part, here's another part, and then we're done. You know? I was really ultimately disappointed in that song when it came down to it. Like, there's a couple songs on that record where I look at them and I kind of cringe, and that used to be one of those songs where I was like, God damn it, like that, maybe that there was a good idea in there somewhere, but it really didn't like, we didn't execute it that well. Um, but now I feel a lot better about it, so. What are you gonna say when she picks up the phone? Should you leave a message? So the song you played was Pretty Girls, which was from Searching for a Former Clarity. When you wrote it, what were kind of, you know, the emotions and feelings going into it as opposed to now where you've kind of changed it and, and made it anew? Well, that song was a song that we all liked it when we like wrote it for the record, but then like playing it live never worked. And there was kind of like a myriad of reasons for that. At the time, like my band was going through crazy, like this whole major label thing and we we're being courted and we're like still on fat records, but like, you know, we're trying to figure out what we're doing. And for me, I was going through things internally that had nothing to do with that, specifically struggling with gender dysphoria. That was very much what most of the songs on that record were about and like what the overall theme was. Um, but that song in particular was just like kind of a simple song, like, in that I had a crush on someone and I wanted to ask this person out on a date. What are you gonna say when she picks up the phone? Should you leave a message if she's not at home? Like after my divorce, like it took me a while before I felt like I could date again. And when I like had this crush and I just wanted to date, you know, I didn't want anything complicated or whatever, but I knew that that's the way that relationships went. And like in a way that that was kind of probably part of the cause of my previous marriage falling apart was that I had this big part of myself that I couldn't communicate to somebody that, you know, um, that I was trans. And so it was like, you know, you have this really simple intent of just wanting to like hang out with somebody and be in somebody's company, but feeling like that if that went any further beyond that, that you'd be like lying by not disclosing something about yourself. But so I didn't feel like I could be really like open with that originally because mm -hmm. I would out myself or whatever. So I changed a couple of the lyrics of the song and, uh, and then never really liked playing it yeah. <laughs> consequently. You wouldn't think something like gender identity complicate something as simple as asking for some company. Um, but there, there were other reasons too, like why that song didn't work live, I don't think. But recently, like we've kind of brought it back and doing it like the way I did it out there, um, acoustic can kind of put the brakes in there and break it up and like, um, and do it way, way more the way like it was written. That's like the way the words are supposed to be read. You mm -hmm. know, they're not supposed to be, I guess, sung in that way or, or it loses something, you know? Yeah. And switching back there to their original lyrics, like, make me feel a lot better about the song. And, and it feels really good as a full band song now, too. Because there are things that cannot be undone. There are mistakes that will never be forgiven. Sometimes it's not a pain away. I think specifically at the time that song was written, the feeling was that I felt stuck in Gainesville and I felt mm -hmm. stuck like kind of um, in this in this scene, you know, in the punk rock scene. I think that that changed, you know, like I feel different towards Gainesville and I feel different towards my past and towards mm -hmm. those things. Do you think there's part of that is that is reacting to like this is a place that's supposed to be open and supportive and it's actually just, you know, full of assholes? Well, that was that that was what I. I felt like for a long time, like everything starting out with my band, you know, we, we didn't care about making money. We wanted to fucking go out and change the world. And it was weird, like feeling like that you knew that you were operating from a place that was great intentions, while other people who weren't involved in it and didn't have the same perspective as you were telling you how to do things, you know, mm -hmm. specifically when it was like, 
you know, a lot of the things I was going through privately were like things that I couldn't express or justify, like of like, okay, yeah, sure, maybe that's the right decision for you in your life. But me, I'm thinking long term and I'm struggling with these things and I don't know how to deal with that. Like it was a lot of pressure and it was a weird spot to be in, you know, and I still really strongly believe like in punk rock as naive and like um, stupid as that probably sounds, you know, but I do like and, and it's something that's had an effect on my life that will forever resonate, you know? A junk mouth will need again Sometimes I say the dumbest things Oh, but it's I you specifically It could be anybody I've got in Memphis up in my head And it was already over before it started How did that sound in there? Cool? Sweet.